Hello. Hey. So the last issue for me is the ESC sender. I'll fix it so and deploy it to you. Yep. With the nice. Empty blocks filled in. Yeah. You're filling them with the, the block timestamp with one, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Let's see if others are joining. My guess said that he cannot join this time, but let's see the others. Just wondering if, in theory, we want to make it dynamic. Oh, this is not really needed for V1. Uh, yeah, I would imagine if there could be some constant parameter that is that is the what is the timestamp, then I think it should come from those. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. but I know where the 12 seconds come from. I don't know if the EVM even knows about it. And so there's probably they might not be a variable. Mm -hmm. All right. Have you been able to run the test suite locally so that you are getting the differences to the get? Um, not yet. I was mainly focusing on fixing the main issues with the okay, yeah. merge conflict that I had and the little things that you've sent to me. Yeah. Enough. Like I checked the trail line, I think all of those will tell us the hash thing but other than those i think everything was fixed there and mm -hmm. i think that getting the hash match should be in the way that last thing that when everything else matches and hash doesn't match then you should look what's wrong with it but i think in many places it's already matches and there's some inputs where it doesn't do we have really cases where the hash matches i, I think yeah Perfect. But not always. Mm. There, there are some differences with the timestamps, for example, and those are some weird that I don't know why the timestamps are somehow different. And those, that's something that I wouldn't expect the timestamps to be different. I think Nethermind is getting somewhere for the 12 seconds thing, and then Get is using one second or something like that. But it didn't happen every time, so no, that's why I wasn't really able to figure out where it comes from. That's strange. We actually like tried to force plus one in timings, but I'll take a look. Okay. Hey guys. Hey. Hello. Uh, sorry for missing out last time. I was uh, traveling. And um, I don't really have a lot to report for this week. But yeah, I'm planning to look into the things that uh, Kimmy found and also do the refactor for it. Yeah, um, and you asked, asked about the test that I'm simulating it, not latest, and I have been, I have had tests like that already there, so it should overwrite the blocks, the future blocks with that. Okay. And I think that has been working with both net and gather more. Mm -hmm. Hey, Lukas. Hey, hey. Then I think we have everyone, my guys is joining today. I don't think we have much to discuss. I asked, asked about that, that when we are doing the filling, then what should we add to the timestamp? And I think it would be logical in the main that to add 12 seconds between the blocks, but then we have agreed before that, that we always add one. And I wonder if that can be confusing for the users. 
but is there any way how we could get the kind of the blocks? What is the general the timestamp difference between the blocks? Go ahead, Lukas. Uh, so we have, uh, I think, a configurable parameter because on some networks we have a different slot time. So, for example, on Gnosis chains we have five seconds uh, blocks. Um, but yeah, we can generally uh, use it very easily. So it's fine for us to add, for example, 12 seconds or five seconds or whatever is on the actual chain. I think we can even potentially add a um, parameter to the config object, like default timestamp. That's the default diff timestamp or something like that. I think there was some other place that when you generate new blocks, that's also that we add one second to those. And before we agreed one second, because that would work on the, all of the chains. But I don't know if it's complex to make it depend on some variable instead of always being one second. No, I think it should be straightforward. But sh should it be config variable or is there already some known variable that we could use for that? Some kind of client config so that uh, they're, they're already setting somewhere that we could utilize the same thing. Geth doesn't have something like this. Mm, that's why I'm also suggesting potentially adding into the method if you want to have this feature as standard that every client implements it. Mm, but yeah, I'm not a strong position. Yeah, that's something that I'm worrying about, about that then we add new variable there if the, it doesn't exist already. And, but I'm a bit surprised that it doesn't exist already. I know it, where the 12 seconds come from. Is that That's not in the EVM, I guess. But I, I, I guess then we should keep it at one second, but I can imagine that people will have issues with that. So 12 seconds comes from CL layer currently. This is how it's configured that every 12 seconds there's a slot. Um, there is sometimes there are missed slots and this results in uh, longer uh, pauses for EL, more than 12 seconds, but 12 seconds is default and most of blocks come every 12 seconds. Just wondering what happens to a transactional contract when for example, we had like intervals one, 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 and then we would get something like a thousand because a user can specify any time in his block. And so he could specify like time number one and then time number one million. Would it be well, all right? It will, it will happen. Whatever will be programmed in the contract, right? So. Mm -hmm. At the end, yeah, can just... The EVM can just ask for the timestamp, but then it can be whatever. And it depends on the contract, does it break or not, but, but it should work. Yeah, but by default, I would use the default block time for the network. Yeah, that, that's the, just the problem. Where, where do we get that information? And if, it, if we make new config parameter, then it can be, it's kind of more broad that someone forgets to change it. but. You know, like I said, in Nevermind, it's already there in the config for the network because we need it for something. I don't okay, remember what, what we are using it for, but we need it here and there. So we, it's already there. I wonder why Get doesn't have it. Then. Well, we don't explicitly support other chains. And I think if the other chains were, because usually they have a fork of Get and they could override this variable let's say so yeah i'm i'm kind of okay with lucas's suggestion to, to use 12 seconds and then for other chains somehow they they need to figure it out 
that should be when we are filling blocks, then we use 12 seconds. And also when the user is adding more blocks, but they don't specify the timestamp, then I think we should set the timestamp as, as the parent plus 12 seconds. So do we ag agree on doing that then? But yeah, I, I feel get should make it so it, it's somehow the, some constant that can be easily modified. Okay. So which would be our default time at the time of current network? 12 seconds meaning for now? Yeah, 12 seconds, but then you should ask from Lucas if there's a variable where you should fetch it so yeah, that we'll, you are not we'll hard coding it. More. Data from the variable, but as I remember currently in the protocol, we have something like specified it to be one second. So we are changing that, yes? Yeah, I think everywhere we are using it one second, then we said 12 seconds instead. Mm -hmm. Perfect. There's two places. There's when we are filling the blocks, and then there's when the user hadn't set the timestamp, then the default will be 12 seconds. OK. Do you have anything else? Not from my side. I guess everything is clear. There's still some amount of failing tests, and then hopefully those will, those will be going down, so we can then re release finally. Yay! I guess first it will go up when we do the refactor, and then they will go down. Yeah. Do you know when you get that done? So I can start looking at that. And I haven't modified any of the tests, so then I'm expecting a lot of the, of the tests fa failing. And then I can see if I should modify them or some of them I probably keep as, as, as they are so that they're testing that it doesn't behave like it used to, used to behave. Yeah, I mean, if I um, get better now, <laughs> I'm hoping in a few days. Yeah. I, I started on that on Friday, but yeah. Um, very it, still feel, so far. it still feel, feels straightforward to implement? Um, yeah, there was only one small nuance. I remember because when we are generating the blocks in the gap, then we cannot do it like fill all the fields in advance because for parent hash we need to first execute the parent block and then fill it. But that's um, that's the only one I faced right now. Yeah, you have to do it sequentially. I guess that's that's a problem. That you always have to generate one block and then you can only after that you can generate the next block. Yeah. So. The... Well, I think what I'm going to do is just like do a first pass and fill in as much as I can and then start executing the blocks and then fill in the parent hashes. The base V also is dependent on the previous box. Though if they're empty, you can, the calculation is pretty simple. Uh, true, yes. Well, uh, but for, wait, wait, for, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. We can't even fill them for empty blocks, right? Because uh, we need the parent gas used. Uh, you... Yes. Sorry. Yeah. So I guess if, if if your empty box blocks are at the beginning, then you can pre-fill them. If there's like empty block, empty block, filled block, empty block, then that last empty block you can't pre-calculate until after you run the filled block. But why are you even feeling some of the fields? Wouldn't you just over generate one block and then, then you run the EVM and everything and then you generate another block like one by one? Um, 
So this was for a preparation phase, basically. It's like there's some validations being done, for example, that the block number is increasing and so on. And I use this chance to oh, ask yeah. some details. But yeah, I mean, I was actually thinking about your suggestion also to just do the minimal thing, only the validation in the first pass and fill in everything up, um, during execution. I'm going to... Yeah, yeah, and I guess you wanted to fail as fast, fast as possible if the but input is incorrect. Yeah, yeah, the validation, I, I, I insist it should happen in the beginning and fail as fast as possible. But like the everything else can come later. But there can be, for example, wrong nonce, and you don't know that. You only know that after the simulation. Yeah, yeah. Well, only the things that we can know in advance. Yeah, I guess you could pre-compute all the nonces before beforehand, but then I'm not sure if it's worth the complexity to do it beforehand, and then you calculate it again anyway later on. Yeah, I'm. I would I would start with something simple and then um, add in optimizations if it was necessary. Yeah. Does Mika have anything to discuss about? Or is everything clear? I don't have anything else, I don't think. Then we can continue next week. Sorry, okay. I was late. No worries, we already made that decisions that you don't agree. <laughs> That's an excellent time. Yeah. Okay, talk to you later. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.